I know before now, there's no way you're going to get money from the bank without a collateral. So what we did was to just take off that whole bottleneck and say, these guys are creative. What they have is their creative intellectual property. So that becomes the collateral. Uh, we had negotiation with Providence Bank and we were able to agree on a funding structure for, for them. And uh, thank, thank, thank you to Providence Bank. They gave us $5 billion for the film industry. So basically what we did was, if you have a film project, apply, then you get the funding to produce the film. When you're done, return the money back to the bank, then there's a sharing formula of 70, 30. So the, the creative take the 70%, th then the, the bank take the, the 30. And um, 1.5 billion was approved for four actors to start their film, start their film uh, last week. This was done last week. And very soon we're going to start the next batch. So out of 5 billion, we've taken a 1.5. Then the next batch will do the same, the same phase too. They go through screening and they get their money. And we've gotten guarantee from the bank that as long as this works, because the truth is that some of these things have been tried in the past and it didn't work, where they gave money to uh, producers, instead of them producing film, they used the money to buy houses, cars, and all of that. It's not good for business. Banks are that there to make profits. So also, we have to also try and protect this financial institution. And for me, if you achieve success with one, it's easy for you to bring other financial institutions into the, into the room. So we're glad that we started this, and we're hoping that with the results that we're going to achieve from this phase, we can bring in other other financial institutions. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Fergo literally said everything, but I just wanted to add to it. Uh, yeah, we're so committed in, um, in helping and uplifting the creative sector. One other thing that is important that we're working on is um, there's literally no industry that would survive without good policies. And this administration is interested in working on policies that will be favorable for creatives in Nigeria. Um, you know, talk about the National Assembly. We have a committee for art, culture, and creative economy. And even from our team in the presidency, we're working on intellectual property policies uh, and other bills that will be favorable for creatives in Nigeria. Uh, also, we're trying to train, we're training women in the creative sector. We're trying to train about 5,000 women in the creative sector. And uh, we're also focused on um, vulnerable women. It's not just for everyone, you understand. Uh, I think Fergo literally said everything. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you, sir. Um, so my question bothers on the um, ROI side of things. And, you know, I've been in the industry now for about three, four years. And one of the things I've heard a lot, especially at festivals, is where um, filmmakers are talking about the fact that there are a lot of initiatives bordering around education and training of, you know, young people to get into the industry. But there's not there's not a, an equal energy or um, support for developing the infrastructure that will actually ensure that you know these people will be able to do things that will become financially viable. For example, we are churning out a lot of films. Um, I've been in conversation where people have said um, a tribe called Judah by Funga Kidele could have made five billion, six billion naira easily if we had more screens to show the film. So, is there? Will there be anything? To, to support or to, that will be directed towards this side as part of this funding, or this is just for the development of you know, uh, films? And thank okay, you. thank you very much. So there's a program called IDICE. Uh, it's Investment in Digital and Creative Enterprise. It's a uh, $617 million uh, investment for both the creative and the digital. Now, typically, what that, what that fund is going to be used for is for capacity development, building of infrastructure and access to finance. So the aspect that deals with infrastructure will, will solve that problem that I just mentioned because we, we acknowledge that there's no enough infrastructure to support the creative, creative industry. So that's why, why IDAIS was, was set up. So some of those things are going to be uh, fixed. So we're going to have a new uh, film studio coming up. And also, now let me say this, the IDAIS fund will go to business owners. So if someone has an idea to build um, uh, a cinema in a place, in a state where there is none. And because we know that this is going to support the industry, then it will fly. So it's stuff like that that IDAIS is made for. Thank you. We'll be taking one last question, please. Thank you. So most of these filmmakers complain about um, 
piracy and all of that. Is there anything your office is doing to actually tackle that? Because you might be losing money. All right, thank you. We know how the um, privacy is in Nigeria, and um, the ministry has like um, a tax force team working on that already on policies. You know, I mentioned policies earlier, and you know, over the years, um, you know, most administration we've not fo they've not focused on things like this on pri privacy, on intellectual property. But for us, we're interested in this, we're committed to this. We have a team working on that. We have a team working on the punishments that should even go to people that pirate people's movies. Do you understand? So we're working on that also in conjunction with um, the Ministry of Justice, actually. Thank you.